Hey guys, this is the intro to this video, which is the knife geometry and edges under the microscope, part three. The reason I've done this intro is because this is a very long video, and there's a lot of good information in it, and if you really want to learn and understand, then it probably pays to get some popcorn, coffee, coke, sit down, watch it and listen very carefully, because uh, if you just skip through it, or don't watch to the entire end, you're going to miss a lot of valuable information. Uh, if you're just interested in some pretty pictures and you don't want to learn anything, by all means just skip through with the sound off. Uh, otherwise, pretend I have a nice, calm, soothing voice, get a drink, and pay really close attention. Uh, hopefully the images have come up as well as I can see them myself. And uh, you know, if you watch right through to the very end and listen to it all, I think you might be a little bit surprised and astounded. And, uh, well, not all of you. Some might know all this already. And, uh, anyway, enjoy either case. Hi, everyone. This is Kylie from CKC Knives. And this is part three in examining edge and geometry under the microscope. And uh, just as a refresher... Uh, the blade was at 800 grit and stropped at this point with a micro bevel. Now, I've just acquired some 1000 grit and 1200 grit paper to continue moving up the grits to show you. And that's as far as I'm going to take it. I personally never go higher than that level of grit on any knife and obtain a levels of sharpness more than sufficient for anything I typically do. Uh, I don't shave with my knives with my face, so... What we're going to do is, for the next two steps, I won't be polishing the entire face of the blade. We'll be focusing on simply polishing and refining the micro bevel and the face of the blade just above it uh, on the grits. So I'm going to go and do that now at the 1000 grit and we'll come back and look at it. And uh, we've got a few other questions people ask me to look at and examine that we'll get to after I go up the grits. And one of them is, uh, in one of my sharpening demonstrations using a smooth hone I demonstrated how easy it is to basically dull an edge at a microscopic level to where it won't cut paper anymore and restore it using uh, I used one of my CKC hones it could be ceramic whatever so we'll demonstrate dulling it and showing how that looks under the microscope and actually showing in you a newspaper the effect and that alone should really uh, show the significance of edge geometry when you're biting into things like woods and other things, if you can alter dramatically just cutting a piece of paper by such a small thing, then of course uh, adverse effects can be magnified tremendously as you go up the bevel. So let me go uh, restore the edge on the thousand grit and come back and we'll look at it. Okay, I think I well and truly rubbed the heck out of the edge and over rubbed it to make sure that I got a thousand grit polish on it. We're at the 60 zoom now, and uh, there's a focus in there. Hopefully it's identifiable, the smoother, crisp, clean bevel that we've got there. And at 60 we'll look at it under here, and you can see if you look very carefully that uh, let me try and get that up into the middle you can see the shreds of a wire burr from the sharpening because this has not been stropped, deburred or anything uh, what I'm talking about is these glinting uh, I actually have to try and balance the blade on the <laughs> microscope cap to do this with one hand so it's a little bit tricky what I'm referring to are these little specks and glints of light here uh, bits of steel dangling off from the sharpening process but you should be able to see the micro bevel section there now let's go up to the higher zoom and look at it closely at a thousand grit. Alright. 
hopefully it's not over bright on the camera that you're looking at. There we go. And uh, really, at 800,000, these are very subtle differences. You, you've got to look carefully to notice the difference on the actual bevel faces. But uh, you can see all that sort of what looks like chipping and slag on the edge. Fractures and things. And that's basically come off the rough sandpaper without any deburring and other things. Now let's try and flip that over on its side and have a look at those similar areas. So basically if you look really carefully you can see the light glinting off everything uh, because the edge has got lots of folds and crinkles in it from having come off that aggressive sandpaper and it is aggressive the thing's very very chunky and the whole thing has got lots of little folds and wrinkles and bends and bites in it oh sorry let me try and get this down I'm out of view sorry I've got to refocus it for you it's amazing the tiniest movement and it's out of view at this size. There we go. If I keep it centered, it should be in frame on the camera. The tiniest, tiniest movement of my fingers and everything is just out of whack. And obviously my fingers are a little bit tired from sharpening. But you should see all that wrinkling. So now I'm going to deburr it and we'll have another quick look at it. So, just about <laughs> picked up the ceramic. I'll just grab this ballpoint pen again. Uh, a piece of wood would be better, but you know, plastic is aggressive enough. And I'm being very hard. I'm putting a lot of pressure and actually sawing, trying to, I'm literally trying to cut the plastic. You will see, if you look, all the gouges in the pen, I'm literally slicing into the pen, being very, very aggressive for this to demonstrate it. And let's go look under the microscope again. Try and get it in focus. Okay. Now. You can see what I've done is rip off all those jagged little bits. They basically got caught in the plastic and got pulled off. And now what I've got is closer to the true edge. And this is why deburring can be very important. Otherwise, what you're left with and cutting with are lots of little fragments of garbage. And that deburring has left me with a cleaner edge, which now if I refine it on a strop, or even go back and softly refine it on the sandpaper, is going to leave me a much cleaner cutting, better edge. So that's the thousand grit with the micro bevel. Now we won't even bother doing a cut test at this point. I'll just take it straight up to 1200 now and uh, we'll go from there because really there's very little difference between a thousand and twelve hundred insignificant so uh, sorry a thousand and eight hundred so let's boost up now I'll pause and go sharpen okay so I've just spent a minute or two on the twelve hundred grit paper polishing that micro bevel and we're back to 60 zoom to have a quick peek at it And this is not been deburred, stropped or anything. But very light touches on the 1200 paper with trailing strokes. And you can see how very, very clean we've hit once we get to 1200. When you get to 1200 grit, 
that's what I, it's to me it's as high as I need to go that's where I kind of feel like I'm at a point of equilibrium between value and cutting performance it actually looks like my edge might be microscopically lopsided it's hard to tell but uh, let's now take this up to the 400x and have a look see and then we're going to look at some other interesting things oh there we go okay so we'll drag the knife down and here we are now as clean as that looked at 60 just like before when we come off the actual sandpaper because sandpaper is made of lots of little jagged things and as crisp and clean as that is you can see all these defects in the edge at this tiny tiny level and you think oh my god that's horrible but you know it's uh, just stuff stuck to the edge basically sanding abrasives and compounds and other things and we're at a massively magnified level so let's flip that over and focus in on it so I need to zoom this out a bit there we go I think I was zoomed in by accident that's why I keep going out of view sorry about that but hopefully you've been seeing everything because I can't re-edit it. Okay, so we've got a pretty clean apex there and there's just particles and stuff stuck to the edge uh, from the paper and the cleaning and wiping the WD-40 off. Let's pick another section of the edge. Right, now here's a good example of what looks like basically a chunk or fragment of steel which is just adhered to the edge stuck there but you can see apart from everything it's very crisp and clear now let's get some paper and do a cutting test at this point in time on the sandpaper sharpened edge that's not been cleaned up so So here's a piece of clean paper, and that's the 1200 as it is, rough. So it's very clean, but you can kind of feel the scratching. So now we're going to deburr it, and uh, this time I'm going to deburr it on some hardwood. Here's a hammer, I'll find a nice little piece of the wood and I'm going to mark a section this will be interesting let me mark with oh my god I know what I'll do I'll get a sticker this will be the easiest way to mark it okay I've got a sticker and I'm going to deburr it beside the sticker for easy identification right there I'll do two side-by-side -side markings and instantly I notice it's very very clean compared to before and I'll do one more for good measure it's very hard to do this at that angle okay now let's have another look at the edge after striking it through the wood three times get the microscope straight and in focus okay so now we can see bits of catching and things on there but overall it just looks a little bit cleaner and ready for polishing effectively on the strop try and take it this way 
get the focal point in. We're talking about very, very subtle differences here. Now I'm going to grab the hammer and have a look at the scratch marks that I just did when I was deburring. I've never done that before and I'm quite curious. And it shows you how much we're zooming up here to uh, do this. If I lay the hammer on its side, I might have better accuracy with the microscope. I've got to try and... So there's our little score mark into the wood. Oh, very, very tricky doing this. Trying to move the microscope, such a tiny, tiny fragment. And uh, I don't know if you can see, but basically there's just little bits of junk and crap embedded in there that were partially probably on the wood itself and partially stuff that was on the blade that's now stuck in the wood. It's like looking at a scab. See those little things stuck in there? Well they were probably on the edge. Scraped off. Okay, now let's just uh, get another fresh piece of paper. And uh, we've deburred it, we'll give it a cut. A little bit better but not much difference because once you're starting to get to this grade of sharpening, uh, I guess the thing is that there's very subtle differences happening. The amount of burr and wire is not as big. Now I'll quickly just uh, give it some light strops. Slightly higher angle. And back to the microscope. I'll just wipe it with the microfiber cloth to try and get a bit of the gunk off. And let's have a look at it before we do a cut test because the cut test will make paper stick to it. Okay, so I think it's fairly obvious the amount of shine that's come off the stropping on that edge. And remember, we're at 400 now. You know, look at the size of the microfibers. So if we go back to 60 again and see how that stropping looks, it looks like a glinting light pattern. Now I'll get a 400 top view, we forgot to do that, sorry I'll get there, lots of steps to try and remember to fit in each time, I think that looks like the blade, there we go, it's a pretty crisp clean edge, notice now it's more shadowy rather than light reflecting on the bevels and things. It's just getting very clean. Very sharp, straight line after the honing. And now we'll get the piece of paper. Lots of paper being cut. And we're getting an extremely good clean slice now. So, that was the first part of the demonstration. Uh, let me pause and go and get another knife. Okay, this is the CTS-XHP that I demonstrated on the phone book yesterday in the version. And I just want to show how clean cutting this is. This is uh, the paper. See how crisp and clean that is? It's very, very nice. Very nice. In fact, that's possibly uh, smoother than the one we've been working on. Now I'd like to show you that under the microscope and show you the difference between them. 
because this is a very different steel. Alright, so there's its micro bevel. You can see that it's actually very crisp, very aligned and perfect from the factory. You know, it's beautiful looking and it's much easier to measure and see because they've used flat planes, you know, there's no blending. No blending at all. It's just stark contrast between one area and the other. But that mach that bevel is extremely crisp and that makes it cut really, really well. Uh, quickly whip this one up. And there's a good chance I'm looking at this and rapidly doing this for this video one side of my convex may be slightly thicker than the other looking at it it's quite tricky to tell now let me try and do something without cutting myself And that's the two edges next to each other at 60. Got to be very careful doing this. Right, now we're going to boost up at 400 on the Spyderco. Because as I've shown, it's extremely nice cutting. The issue with it is the geometry that caused it to have problems with the phone book, not the edge. The edge is beautiful. Very nice. And let's crank right up. You can see the side facing, it's about a similar sort of grit and scratch to my one. Now, look at the size of the micro bevel. I can't even, well, it's not even, it's not a micro bevel, that's actually just their secondary bevel flat. And it doesn't fit in the view. Let me get the focus on. Now, look how toothy that is. Jagged and toothy. It's like a little saw, and uh, in fact, it's cutting so well because it's so perfectly aligned. You know, you can see all those little scratches, deep, deep scratches on the bevel going up to it, but it's clearly been precision honed afterwards at a finer level because the bevel edge itself is much, much crisper and cleaner than the scratch pattern of the side of the bevel indicates. See all that light? It's basically got a very rough, looks like a 180 to 220 grit bevel, but then it's been honed like hell. It's been polished on that tiny, tiny, tiny area at the end to a crisp, clean edge. And uh, it just looks really nice. But the failure in its performance in cutting deeply and other things is the size of that bevel. Let me try and get it in focus again. Now, under the microscope, look how thick that is. When I rock it to side to side, you'd think you're looking at the side of a box. There is an incredibly vast amount of steel on this edge. It's massive. Now, this might be slightly hard and dangerous for me to do. Uh, I will try and get both of them in the view at the same time. At a particular section of the blade. Without trimming my finger off. So, please have some patience for this bit. That's my one on the right. Do you see how different that is? Look at that. Compared to that. When I roll it side to side. 
is just astronomically more steel. Astronomical. Hopefully that's all showing up, but yeah, big, big difference in the amount of steel. And that's why one bites in so deep and the other just stops like a brick wall. So, on to the next step of this video. Now that we've done that, let's just quickly go back to, we're onto my, my knife again with this thin convex edge. And, you know, I think it's very obvious how much difference in 10 degrees to 18 degrees per side actually makes. And uh, when you look at it, that bevel just looks insanely big on the spider cut. Now, we're going to do a quick sharpness test here. Very clean cutting. This is for Spartan Johns wanted to see this. This is one of my serat sorry, my nitrided hones. Before we run it through, let's try and zoom up on this and show you what it looks like at 60. Because this is a very smooth one. But when we say smooth, it's all relative. So that's how it looks at 60. Let's boost up. Okay, so this is at 400. So you can see it's uh, smooth but not. There's lots of little particles sticking up on that surface like crystalline structure from the nitriding. And uh, that's about the best I can show really. It's round so there's nothing to show an edge on. But what we're going to do now is lightly run this on here. And test the cutting performance. Okay. You can see that light, light adjustment, and we have annihilated it. If I fold this in two, I'm getting ripping fractures. So let's look at the paper under the microscope and examine what has just happened. That's the ink. Let me try and find the actual tearing juncture. So that's the paper cut at 400 after running it over the ceramic when it basically forced its way through. Uh, and this is how it looked beforehand. Maybe hard to tell under such tiny zoom, but let's have a look at the edge, which is now effectively dull. And uh, just to demonstrate or test, this edge not even can't shave, I don't even feel like it'll cut me. Okay, I'm hitting myself with it. And that was just after a microscopic, very light tap on the ceramic, sorry, not the ceramic, I keep having ceramic in my mind because he mentioned ceramic, on my sharpening hone. So let's have a look at what I've done to the edge with that tiny, tiny adjustment. And we're at 400x. There's my micro bevel. All right. Can you see a difference? I'm in the center of the blade where I was just trying to hit myself and cut the paper. You cannot see a difference, can you? It looks exactly the same. Let's look at it top down. See all the light glinting off it? Look at all that light shining off it. Now again, we need to be reminded of what a tiny, tiny, tiny area we are talking about, I think. Uh, let me find something very, very small again. Here's some of those dots again. So, you know, if you look at the size of those little blue dots, 
we will line that up with the edge of the blade where we're looking at that light glinting. And there's those tiny dots. Now, the size of that dot, and if you look very, very carefully, that there, with my pen that I'm wiggling now, is the damage. That tiny bit is the damage I've just done, which is now preventing this from cutting. Now, let's run this backwards on the hone very lightly. Quickly give it a test, who knows. We've got moderate edge, but not great yet. Let me just do it a bit more. It's hard to do this in front of the camera, aiming away from me. Okay, let's try that again. Fresh bit of paper would be nice for this. Let me get a fresh piece. Something I can actually hold on to without it wobbling everywhere. Left, right and centre. There's a chance that I've done more damage than I think. Okay, so we're back to a rough cut. So I'll get the strop. I don't want to just keep going on the steel hone. Get the strop and we're going to go one, two. Nice and clean. So let's look at the edge now. That excessive light is much less now. You're getting a general reflection. But what you can see, if you look very carefully, maybe a little bit hard, because we're talking about such a small, imperceptible thing. See that there? You've got light, then you've got a dark fracture line. That's where it folded, and it's been folded back. Let me try and get it in the centre of the camera. It's a perfect example. It's like looking at an x-ray. There it is there. That tiny bit there is how much steel we folded. And uh, if I get a ruler and put a ruler underneath, hopefully I need padding under this to elevate the gosh darn thing so I can push it give me two seconds I don't want to edit this out I just want to do it alright just remember how big that tiny fracture hairline was where I showed the bend because it's in a different spot on the blade now but if we come down here Basically the damage from the ceramic that completely dulled the knife was on this high of the steel. That much. That's how much damage we did there. Okay. Now, that black mark in the background is a one millimeter marker. And let's slide up. That there is one millimeter. So we're talking about one hundredth of a millimeter roughly was what we damaged with the ceramic to completely dull the knife and uh, when I do the videos and I get all these comments saying no one's measuring, you, it's impossible to measure how tiny this is well I don't need to measure it but I just did but 
I can see and perceive the difference just by small modifications on sharpening stones. I can alter the apex of the edge. The apex is so small and so weak and so fragile that that's all it takes to uh, damage and restore it. And that's really what we're talking about with rolling, edge resist, chipping, all that sort of thing. Little chips don't really affect the knife that much. Uh, that tiny bit of rolling, that's what's going to cause problems. And uh, certainly having a bevel as thick as this means it may roll less, you would think. Will it roll less? It's just so much thicker. Well, it's when it gets to uh, things like all knives are sort of equal to a certain point and then when they hit the wrong thing like a stone or whatever there's a certain point where the thickness doesn't help. Now let's just uh, test this out because this is a super steel. Do the same thing, lightly roll it a couple of times, it can still cut but it's lost a lot of performance. It's nowhere near as good. Third time, as hard as I did the other one. And it's history. So, now let's look at this under the microscope because this is the telling point about thick secondary bevels. Here's your giant bevel. Let's go all the way down. It looks kind of identical to before. Let's flip it over and look at it under the microscope this way. And you can see all the reflective light and how I've completely folded that edge over. You can actually see the bends and the dings in it. You can see all that light reflectance because it's been folded over. Now, ask yourself, what did this giant, horrendously massive, super thick bevel do to protect your cutting edge? Nothing, because the only thing related to sharpness and cutting is this one hundredth of a millimeter of the apex of the edge. That is what makes your knife work. All this stuff behind here is what makes your knife work well. Now, this kind of thick bevel, what it's going to protect you against is major failure. If you hit a nail hard or a rock hard, it's basically protecting you against, you know, a major impact where you're going to slam into a rock hard and rather than a thin one like this that might go boom and lose one or two millimeters of the edge, that really thick one is more likely to actually compress in like that, go squish rather than snap. But is that squishing any better really? Because you've still got to grind it out. Once it's squashed that much, if it goes squish because it's so thick that it can't go flip, then you've got to grind an entire thick bevel all the way across to grind that out. Whereas if you've got a thin bevel and you go squish, you can roll it back a bit and then just resharpen very quickly. So there's pros and cons. Who's right or wrong, I don't know. I'm just showing you the evidence. Thanks for watching, guys.